Hello again and welcome. We're continuing to look at the Keysight U1282A while performing the initial checkout of the meter. I found that when we use this frequency counter mode, the meter had problems once we got up above about 30 megahertz. And if you go back and look at that video, what you find is the meter starts reading very high frequencies. I don't really know what the cause of that is, but I thought what we'd do is just focus on that for a little bit in this second video. So one of the things I was curious about is if we drove the meter with a faster rise time, would it make a difference? So here I have a small module that I made to calibrate my oscilloscopes. Basically what I can do is attach this to my RF generator and then the output of this will give me a fast rise time, in this case about 350 picoseconds with a peak to peak amplitude of 1.2 volts. On the top we have our RF generator. You can see this is currently set for one megahertz. This is connected in series with our counter. The counter is set for a one mega ohm input. Both of these instruments are tied to my GPS receiver. So on the right, this is the Unity UT61E+. Again, if we look at the box for this particular meter, this is the UT61E+. I assume this means frequency counter in hertz. And we can see that they've rated this all the way up to 220 megahertz. Of course, if you watch the video where I ran this meter, it didn't survive trying to run it at 220 megahertz. The meter was damaged. It's been repaired, but I am not using the standard parts. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and we'll increase the frequency. Here's five megahertz. Here we are at 10 megahertz. Here we're at 20. Here we're at 50. 60. 70 megahertz again we're at one megahertz you can see the meters displaying basically a meg 10 megahertz again no problem 25 megahertz again no problem at all you were at 30 and we can see the meters starting to read a little high and this is where it gets interesting. Let's go up a little higher. Right there, 31 megahertz. And you can see the meter is reading 77.5, essentially megahertz. Again, we haven't changed anything. Let's drop this down again to 30. And again, 31. I didn't show this earlier, but this meter was supplied with this notice. You can see Keysight Go Green. I would have thought they'd say Goes Green. Join us to help the environment by going paperless. So while the packing slip for the meter suggests it's supplied with the manuals, it's not actually the case. You have to download it from their website. If you go to their website, the first thing they want you to do is register. Personally, I don't have any problems at all with them going to electronic documentation. Actually, I would prefer that, but don't compound the problem by making users have to generate an account just to get the manuals. So here we can see the specifications for the frequency counter. Notice that they call it a range of essentially 100 megahertz. But if we look to the right column under accuracy, they only specify it to below 20 megahertz. So you could say, well, the meter is just infinitely inaccurate as you get above 20 megahertz. So the fact that the meter shows 70 megahertz when you're applying 30, I guess it's valid according to their spec. So for me, it's not such a big deal that the meter can't read to 100 megahertz. For me, I'm more disappointed that their marketing group would feel the need to overstate what the meter can do. Why well, spend the effort to build up a name brand like Keysight and then use a tactic like that? I just don't get it. So while we're talking about frequency, I had asked about this Hertz mode while using the AC volts mode. So again, we select Hertz. And I was asking about how to get this out of the frequency mode. And I couldn't figure out a way to do that. Well, apparently what you have to do is you have to select this dual switch. There you can see it switches back to AC volts. But what's really odd about this is let's go back to Hertz and cycle through to one of the other modes. Now let's push the dual button. it won't return. Same thing with duty cycle.
So the only way we can get it back is we have to return to Hertz mode and then push the dual button. Now what this particular user told me is rather than to go through the pains of that, they're in the habit of rotating the switch. Again, to me, it looks like the user interface wasn't really well planned. So for example, if we look at the unit T, let's go to AC volts. And let's look at the frequency. Here it is. Again, we select it again. Here's our duty cycle. Select it again, and we're right back to voltage. To me, that's the way this meter should have worked, is that we just cycle through the different modes. But unfortunately, it requires multiple buttons to be pressed just to get back to the voltage mode. Let's just have a look at a couple of other low cost meters. On the right, I have the Oan B41T Plus. Down here, I have a 50 ohm terminator. Inside of this, I have a 40 dB attenuator. This cable then is going off to our frequency counter. You can see we are currently putting out 100 megahertz. And you can see the little O on is reading 116 versus 179. This is made by SEM. This is the model DT9939. I actually picked this meter up for about $120. Let's just have a look at the manual. This is on page 25. And we can see 100 megahertz with a 0.01 megahertz resolution that the accuracy is not specified. Now what some people are saying about this key sight meter specification, basically they're telling you how much the display is capable of displaying. For me, if that were the case, they should do that with every specification. Now personally, because they only do that with the frequency counter, I'm saying they're suggesting that meter is going to work at 100 megahertz essentially. And of course it doesn't. Let's just see how this SEM meter behaves. Again, I don't believe we ever damage this particular meter. You can see it's displaying 21.109 versus 21.113. Let's go ahead and we'll take up the frequency a little higher. And here we are at 84.44 megahertz versus 4.5. And here we're at 120.475 megahertz versus 120.46. So in this particular case, when we look at the manual, they may not specify the accuracy, but the meter will certainly give you a valid reading in excess of 100 megahertz. Again, this is a $120 meter or so compared to, I think on Amazon, this thing sells for about 800. SEM is not known to be a name brand meter, certainly not like Keysight. And I'm not suggesting that this meter again should read up to 99 megahertz. If they can't do it, just specify it to what they can do, like what our Chinese counterpart does. And of course, if you're curious, if I place this meter in the frequency mode now, and I attach it to our meter, can it actually read this? course not <laughs> and of course if we take the frequency back down here we're at 25.828 and you can see the key site is reading spot on with this now again if we take the frequency back up a little bit right there just like with the other setup, you can see the counter, it's not even double, it's some odd multiple. And again, I wasn't expecting a big difference between this homemade attenuator versus the larger one that we were testing with earlier. It's just something about the way that this meter works. Well, I think that's going to be it for this little clip. Because there have been so many reviews for this particular meter, let me know if you have any input on how you'd like to proceed I think we could just jump right into the transient testing because other people have done teardowns. I've done an extensive review as far as the front end of this thing. I could also run other functional tests on the meter. We could find if it's got other weak points. Well, that's all for now, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.